This is Channel 25 WVTT Olean. Now, from the Twin Tiers' biggest broadcast news operation, this is the 6 o'clock report with Jeff Andrulonis and Alexa Olson. Listen on News Radio 96.7 WVTT or watch on News Channel 25 WVTT Television. WVTT proudly presents the 6 o'clock report. Good evening, I'm Alexa Olson. Jeff Andrelonis is off tonight. Topping the 6 o'clock report, Emporium Borough Police are running down leads trying to find Tom Smith. The Clear Creek man allegedly kidnapped a bank employee at gunpoint Wednesday, making her drive away in her SUV. The woman, the woman crashed the vehicle and Smith took off. Smith is considered armed and ag aggravated and should be considered dangerous. Police say Smith's home was in the process of foreclosure by the bank and that may have been the motive for the crime. Police are not speculating on whether Smith is still in the area, but remind residents to remain on alert. Police say because Smith is a wanted felon, anyone who gives him food, clothes, money, transportation or shelter will face charges. Police in Kane are looking for those responsible for stealing flags and flagpoles from a memorial dedicated to a soldier from Kane who died while serving in Afghanistan. The incident occurred sometime between August 1st and August 6th at the Van Guys Memorial in Gibbs Hill Cemetery. Two 20-foot flagpoles were broken from their bases and removed along with a POW flag, a Pennsylvania state flag, and an American flag. Ken Van Geisen was a 1999 Kane Area High School graduate. He died in the line of duty on July 11, 2011. Anyone with information on the theft is asked to contact Kane Base State Police. Well, tomorrow morning at 10.30, New York State Senator Catherine Young will attend the Cattaraugus County Trappers Association Sportsman Show at the Cattaraugus County Fairgrounds in Little Valley. And in the afternoon on Sunday, Senator Young will attend the 175th birthday of Portville at Village Park. Senator Young will present a Senate resolution commemorating the 175th anniversary of the town of Portville. Well, if you've ever wanted to know what it feels like to fly to space, you're in luck. The Dresser Rand Challenger Learning Center offers space flight simulations that feel like the real thing. Our reporter Molly Inglet got a behind the scenes look at the center. Take a look at this. Space travel to Mars might be a few years off, but you can settle your curiosity right here in Allegheny at the Dresser Rand Challenger Learning Center. There has been a lot of excitement over space travel since the NASA rover, Curiosity, successfully landed on Mars early Monday morning. However, now local residents can make trips to Mars right in their own backyard. The Challenger Learning Center in Allegheny offers two space flight simulations, a flight to Mars and one that focuses on Halley's Comet. During the simulations, the participants follow flight manuals and real instructions. The program is particularly popular among schools for educational field trips. And director of the Learning Center, Tom Mosher, told us how much children can learn from this experience. Um, they like the hands-on experience. They like the freedom that they have to work as an individual as well as a team. Um, they, they really get a lot out of what they've, they've learned here. Uh, sometimes I don't think they realize how much they've learned until their teachers have taken them back to the classroom and talked to them about what it was that they really did. Uh, then they, at that point, it's like, oh, wow, we really did learn a lot while we were there. Uh, we hear those comments constantly from our teachers in schools. Mosier showed me around the facility and the different simulation rooms. He explained that they also offer other activities for children, such as a rocket building contest and a chance to ride on a hovercraft, which I got to try out for myself. Mosier explained that the Learning Center in Allegheny is just one of 47 internationally and is in the most rural location. The Challenger program is a nonprofit organization that was created after the NASA Challenger explosion in 1986. Family members of the astronauts wanted something positive to come from the tragedy. In Olean, Molly Inglet, News Channel 25, WVTT. Our thanks to Molly Inglet for that report. Well, besides the 175th anniversary of Portville celebrations going on this weekend, there is the YMCA Fit and Fun Fest. Our sister radio station, Big Bob, will be there broadcasting live. Also going on this weekend, the Taste of Ellicottville will take place on Saturday. And if the weather permits, Olean's 37th annual City Cup softball tournament will be held tonight, tomorrow, and Sunday. 
There will be a men's league and a women's league featuring over 30 teams that consist of local Olean businesses and sponsoring groups that are competing for this year's bragging rights. And according to Olean Mayor Linda Witt, this event comes during the season's climax. A home run derby is also being held after the games tonight. $5 a person to benefit the Michelle Foss Bartholomew Scholarship Fund. Also, tomorrow night, there will be Olean's first diesel semi-professional football game that will be held at the Bradner Stadium at 6 o'clock. And Women's Roller Derby also will be held on Sunday at the William O. Smith Recreation Center featuring our very own Hillbilly Heartbreakers. Well, today was a day dedicated to kids to sponsor a scholarship program. WVTT's Ashley Masala has the story. Unfortunately, it wasn't the best afternoon for the City of Olean Youth Bureau and Recreation Department to hold its Kids Day Charity Carnival, but the kids didn't seem to mind enjoying all of the festivities indoors. The event had games, activities, and even a live band on the ice rink at War Vets Park. Kids got their faces painted, jumped in inflatable bouncy houses, and got the staff wet at the dunking booth. Reality Check had an informational table and also sponsored a swimming session. All the proceeds from the carnival will benefit local memorial scholarship funds. In Olean, Ashley Masala, News Channel 25, WVTT. Well, that severe stormy weather we had produced some power outages across the city of Olean last night. And tonight, the weather is supposed to get bad as well. Storms also blew through McKean County yesterday afternoon, sending emergency crews scrambling to deal with minor damage and flooding being reported. There were also reports of debris blocking traffic in several locations. Meanwhile, Governor Andrew Cuomo announced yesterday that the state is seeking proposals for an estimated $355,000 in survey work on eight New York Works flood control projects. The Department of Environmental Conservation will award the work to a qualified firm. The boundary survey projects include Binghamton, Endicott, Vestal, Johnson City, Corning, Canistillo, Gang Mills, and Montour Falls. Projects include surveying 30 miles of flood protection project boundaries. A Salamanca man has been convicted of taking his young relatives across state lines and repeatedly raping them. 47-year-old Kevin Donaldson, a former truck driver, was convicted of rape after a jury found him guilty of transporting three minors across the state line, sexually abusing them between April of 2004 and July of 2007. A new smart 911 system is being introduced in Chautauqua County. Chautauqua County is the first county to use this system in New York State. The smart 911 system is now used in 20 states across the U.S. Smart 911 is like an online profile that would give first responders all the necessary information they would need if there should be an emergency, such as medical conditions and allergies to medications. It's a free service. The World News Roundup is next. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep it here for more of the 6 o'clock report on News Channel 25 WVTT.